This model was built by Pat Strawn, who did his BS and MS degrees here uh, about 10 years ago. Pat's a uh, design engineer uh, in the Dallas area now, designing elevators. This is one of the most elaborate models that's ever made. Uh, the flywheel is made of uh, aluminum plate. The shaft is mounted in two uh, good ball bearings, and uh, it's all carefully machined. Uh, this illustrates a problem that is used in many vibration books, which is the natural frequency of a physical pendulum as you change its the angle of elevation of its uh, center, of its shaft. In this particular case, we have a slide and we can change the angle, which can be read on this protractor, so we can measure the frequency at any angle. Uh, this model is very nice in that it's easy to measure the dimensions and to get the physical constants, so students have used it for several years to uh, check their, their modeling capability. Uh, the natural frequency depends upon the angle, depends upon the moment of inertia, and the restoring mass. And in this particular case, we can bolt on various amounts of mass here. In weighing those, then we can actually get all of the coefficients of the differential equation and, and do it right. Uh, the highest natural frequency is when the axis is horizontal, and as we increase the angle, the frequency becomes lower. Now with a model like this, the frequencies are so low that one can count them with a stopwatch and measure the frequency uh, quite accurately. That's why this is such a uh, useful model. If we increase the angle to 90 degrees, for the shaft that is, then we have a frequency of zero, and uh, you could say the displacement is in infinity. Now one other interesting sidelight of this particular model is that it's possible to measure the natural frequency quite accurately for the nonlinear case. If one gives this initial start of uh, instead of 10 degrees where things are linear, if we give it 90 degrees, then it's quite nonlinear. And since it will run for a long time, we can, we can measure the frequency pretty accurately and, and then deduce the effects of the nonlinearity. Um, most vibration problems are Nonlinear, we just treat them as linear. In this case, we can go either way. So, okay.